Hey there, Father Michael here. So yesterday afternoon, I had a nice uh, phone conversation with my friend Virginia. Virginia just turned 99 a few weeks ago, and she is living in Oklahoma in an assisted living facility that she straight up loves. Loves. She moved there about 15 years ago to be nearer her, her eldest son, since there was no family left here in this area. Uh, but then he took another job on the East Coast and was planning to take her uh, with him, and she straight up refused. She just said, no, <laughs> I'm not leaving. I like it here. I like the weather here. I have everything I want and I need right here. I am not moving again. And so there she is in Oklahoma, completely surrounded by caring, loving people in the facility where she lives, but nowhere near any family. It was also about 15 years ago that she slipped and fell in her home where she was living by herself and she broke her neck. She should have died. And doctors were absolutely astounded that she did not. But as a result of that fracture in her neck, she's had to wear uh, a wire frame. I don't even know what it's called, but it basically connects to her bones here in her shoulder and it keeps her head completely immobilized. She can't turn left or right. And she even continued to drive for a few years after that accident. 15 years, should have died, didn't, feels like she is living her best life right now. I have never once in the 25 years that I've known her, I've never heard her complain. And yesterday in talking to her, I was so grateful to know her and so grateful to know someone so fearless, living so joyfully. When I first came to town 25 years ago, she was one of the first people that I got to know. We volunteered together at a free clinic and she straight up became my second mother. We have been close since the very beginning. I sang her daughter's funeral when she passed away unexpectedly. And even when she moved away, which was a difficult goodbye for both of us, you know, we've kept in touch. We don't, we don't talk that often, just a few times a year, but we do send cards back and forth. She absolutely insisted on being at my ordination to priesthood 15 years ago. And although she is a Methodist, she's always considered me to be her priest. I've brought her communion countless times. And now, living in this assisted living facility in Oklahoma, she's even got the local Roman Catholic priest giving her communion. <laughs> so, good for you, girl. <laughs> you just keep doing you. And good for you, Father, whoever you are, for having the pastoral insight to see that sometimes the rules of the institution aren't worth a crap. Well, talking to her yesterday really made me think about fear and facing fear and it reminded me of the story of Joshua in the Hebrew scriptures. 
Joshua was, you know, he was no slouch. He was a brave, courageous, strong, warrior kind of a dude. He was the one who inherited the role of leader uh, when Moses died. But despite all his assets, he was still wary and fearful of what God wanted him to do. So again and again, God has to tell Joshua, don't be afraid. It's going to be okay. Be strong. Be courageous. Even in the face of overwhelming odds. Book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 6. Yahweh said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. We are still not out of the woods as far as the COVID-19 pandemic goes. And I just saw in my Facebook feed the other day that it was exactly two years ago on Palm Sunday that I decided to have a drive-through communion on the street corner outside church. I did that for many months, especially during that lockdown, which was pretty much stressful and and ter terrifying for a lot of people. Dozens of people stopped by to talk to me, to ask for prayers, to receive the sacrament over the many months, you know, that I had the drive through communion thing. Some of them came to ask for blessings for their children or their pets. I heard more confessions from non-Catholics in that eight-month period, the, I think, than I've heard the entire rest of my career as a priest. Some people stopped by who were clearly intoxicated or high on drugs. But everybody, everybody was so grateful to have someone to talk to just for a moment. So grateful for that little little bit of ministry of mine on the street corner in a bad neighborhood. Everybody was afraid, myself included. We wondered if we would survive. We wondered if all the people we loved were going to survive. And to be fair, some of them have not. But here we stand. Here we stand, not completely out of the pandemic, living in a world where Russian aggression and evil are being aided once again by the Russian Orthodox Church. Apparently, they don't read much history over there. Where the drug cartels in this country continue to work their evil and, and to kill innocent women and men and children. where a lot of sick people continue to carry unlicensed, unregistered weapons. And a huge population of the country doesn't see any problem having anybody carry a gun for any reason with no background check. It blows my mind. So there's a lot to be afraid of. But the story of Joshua can be an inspiration to us especially those repeated admonitions from God to Joshua, reminding him to just set fear aside and choose to be strong and courageous. God says to him, I will never leave you or forsake you. Those words seem kind of personal to me. They seem like they're meant for me and maybe you as well. Listening to NPR in the morning or watching CNN, man, those stories can certainly stir up 
a fair amount of anxiety and fear and even even a temptation to feel hopeless. The antidote to all of that is found in God's words to Joshua. I am not going to leave you ever. Be strong. Be courageous. Holding on to that promise of God lets us relax and take a breath and and just keep doing the things we have to do. Clinging to that knowledge, trusting that we are never alone. God is always watching over us. A couple years before my friend Virginia moved away, I gave her some of my prized daylilies and I went over to her house and I enlarged a small oval garden that she had in her front yard. And I transplanted those daylilies. And of course, when the following summer came and they were in bloom, she was delighted with the mix of so many colors, purple and red and orange and yellow and white and even a greenish one. And just a couple days ago, before I spoke with her, now that I live not far from where she used to live, I decided to drive by her old house. And so I did, just to see if that little daylily garden that I put in for her so many years ago was still there. And it is. And furthermore, I could see little sprouts of green coming up where those daylilies are already responding to the warming, uh, the warmth of the sun and the soil. And so I told her yesterday when we were talking that I had driven past her old house and to check on those daylilies. And she asked me if I would please go by there again in July when those daylilies would be in bloom and to take a picture and to send it to her to remind her of those happy times, of all those days we worked together, of all the days we sat and drank coffee and just chatted. I said I would, promising that we'd talk soon. You already know, I am not keen on the idea of growing old especially now that I'm having to keep an eye on my A1C. However, in talking to Virginia yesterday, who is 99 and who is just as sharp as she ever was, that kind of relieved some of my anxiety. If that's what getting older looks like, I'm all about it. Count me in. She has chosen to be strong and courageous in the face of some pretty monumental changes and losses and tragedies and all of that. And if she can do it, then so can I. For sure. Her garden of life that she loves with all her heart right now, the garden in which she lives, has made my little garden of life just a little sweeter. Let's pray. Loving, mighty, springtime God, we come into your presence in this moment, grateful for the gift of new life. Be with all of those who are facing daunting odds today, health challenges, both physical and mental, those who are struggling against hopelessness and despair, 
and all of those living in fear in this world that seems sometimes to be succumbing to the darkness. Help us to hold on to your promise to be with us always, to trust that you will never leave us or forsake us, and that we always have the power to set aside fear and just do what needs to be done. Help us today as we tend to our own garden to spend a little time helping someone else tend to theirs. We ask all this in the name of your only begotten, Jesus the Christ, who continues to live and work with you and the Spirit, our true God, now and always. Amen. Have a great day.